Namaste. So now we get to the good part, the benefits of the process of self-realization. For one who sees thus, reflects thus, and understands thus, spirit springs from the self, hope springs from the self, memory springs from the self, akasha springs from the self, fire, water, appearance and disappearance, food, understanding, contemplation, consciousness, will, speech, mind, name, action, the mantra texts. Everything arises from the self. Anyway, always, and everywhere. But people don't realize it because they have some other idea. Huh? In other words, they're ignorant. They don't know. They don't know the self. Therefore, they don't see how all these things are arising. And like we talked about last time, causality runs backwards in time. So what we're seeing, the different phenomena that are arising from the self, are aiming at the attainment of a certain end state. That end state is Aham Brahmasmi, I am Brahman. Alone. Tattva masi, thou art that. That is self realization. And once you understand that, then you get all these incredible benefits. It's not that you cease to exist as an individual or something like that. That may happen later on. But in the beginning, you get like multiple bodies of the highest quality, immortal within the lifespan of the universe, in a, a place where there's no destruction, even from the pralayas between the Maha Yugas, the Divya Yugas, and so on. You know, you get so many benefits. I mean, just the benefits of living or being rooted in that sphere and having complete freedom in that realm are, you know, difficult even for Lord Shiva to explain. They're that profound. And it would take the rest of the creation for him to explain it. By that time, it would be too late. <laughs> so just get it now. Because now you are in touch with the wisdom of the Upanishads. Now you can practice it. See, one who practices thus, one who understands, one who sees like this, that I am Brahman, becomes Brahman, or rather, the fact that he already is Brahman becomes revealed. How does it become revealed? <laughs> By the action of the self. The self itself enlightens itself, because it is only depended upon, or seated upon, or surrounded by itself. There is nothing else. Now, from time to time, the self causes the arisal of certain phenomena, which we call upadis, and range from the idea that I am the god of the universe, <laughs> all the way down to, I am a bacterium. <laughs> so these different upadis, these different bodies, with their concomitant powers and abilities and intelligence and realms of existence and senses and knowledge and on and on and on and on, are all automatically manifested by the itcha shakti, the desire potency of the Supreme, when he desires to become two, then three, then five, then seven, then 11, then 110, and so on, until he expands himself as every living being in the universe. So when you see a living entity, you can know this is Brahman. 
This is Brahman expanding as a cow or as a dog or as my crazy neighbors <laughs> or as a great scholar, a yogin, see, a Bhagavan. At the end of the selection, it defines Bhagavan because it's describing Sanat Kumar Bhagavan. Bhagavan, which is translated colloquially blessing or blessed, the blessed one, simply means he who knows the arising and disappearance of the living beings and the going and non-going of the individual beings. He who knows all this, the science and the nescience, and can explain it all, is Bhagavan. Only he is Bhagavan. So this is the definition. One who knows when the living being leaves the body, how does it leave? Where does it go? Or if the living being attains self-realization, it doesn't go. It doesn't go anywhere. There's nowhere for it to go. It simply directly merges into Brahman, which, of course, is everywhere and in everything and is everything. The essence of being. All the existence that we see, especially in the material realm, the gross material realm, is simply borrowed from Brahman, from the self, through the four states of consciousness and their corollaries, the qualities, activities, the yogas, the views, and so on. So one gets the kind of body, the quality of senses and mind, and the environment, the realm, uh, the loka, according to his level of knowledge, of self-realization. And this, of course, is all, you know, discussed in our, our wonderful old chart. <laughs> Please don't neglect it, but learn it and consider it and contemplate it, and you will get so much out of it. So we are giving this knowledge freely because it's priceless. It's literally, it's worth your life. More than that, worth several lives of devotion, study, and practice to attain the result, because the result is so wonderful. Like it's saying, spirit arises, hope arises, pleasure arises, and so many other wonderful things, intelligence, understanding, consciousness even, arise from the self. So one who knows the self, his memory becomes strong. He remembers the self, that he is the self, and that the self is everything at all times and in all places, in all situations, whether good or bad, right or wrong, but whatever quality of apparent phenomena in the material world, he remembers neti neti. All this is nothing. This is simply a phenomenon and it's temporarily arising because of the interplay of the modes of material nature and it's accordingly borrowed these qualities and energies and its being itself from the self, which is the only true being because it's changeless and eternal, unrelated to anything, uninferable, unthinkable, ungraspable, unspeakable, inconceivable. And the self is, I mean, everyone's self, myself, yourself, if we go deep enough, is that Brahman. This is the truth. This is the main thing. This is the great secret of all the Vedas and especially of the Upanishads. 
Therefore, it is stated that one should learn, first of all, and study the Upanishads because they are the repository of the greatest wisdom in the world, which is the Vedic wisdom. And even among the Vedas and their ancillary parts, such as the Brahmanas, the Aranyakas, and finally the Upanishads, the 10 or 12 main Upanishads that we study and cover and are discussed in the Brahma Sutra or Vedanta Sutra are the most important ones to study because they deal with being and consciousness. And especially the last part of the Brahma Sutra is so important because it deals with the separation of the being from the body at the time of death and the different ways that it can go. It can go by the path of the moon and then again come back into the world. It can go by the path of the sun and step by step rise higher and higher to better and better locus. Or it can simply merge directly into Brahman and not go anywhere, but simply become that which is all, the infinite, the one without a second, Brahman. Aung Tat Sat, Aung Shakti Aung, Aung Namah Shivaya.